Hi everyone, Elwin. Welcome to the Saturday Spotlight Tour. Uh, my name is Laurence and I am a guide here at the beautiful uh, National Gallery of Canada. Um, I want, before we start this program, I want to acknowledge the fact that we are on an unceded uh, Algonquin territory. Um, but let's dig a bit more into the program that we are going to uh, view today. Uh, so today, a big treat for me, uh, we are going to look at uh, babies in Renaissance painting. And right before we go into the, the, the subject and I present you some paintings, I want to let you know a, a bit of context about that. So for many people, uh, when we look at paintings, Renaissance painting, uh, babies will look a bit particular. Um, and, and sometimes people will uh, tell and say that they are a bit weird looking and uh, there's some truth to that. Uh, so just a note for today, today we are going to concentrate only on babies uh, in this painting because we could talk a lot more about this painting and all the elements of it. So we're going to talk about babies mainly. Uh, and th the other thing is that if you uh, want, I encourage you to select and to choose your favorite weird looking baby and to write in the comments uh, below uh, the video and I will gladly look through it. So today we are going to look at that together and we're going to see some gems that we have here at the National Gallery. So the first question I have for you is when you look at this uh, figure, how old do you think this person is? Um, and that's a really interesting question because what happens if, if you zoom out, you can actually see the whole picture itself. And now you get a sense of what this person should be. And it should be actually an infant. Uh, so it represents, this painting represents Saint Anne with uh, her daughter, so Mary. Um, what is interesting before we necessarily go and talk about this painting is to know that uh, to understand a bit more why babies look like that we have to go back to the years uh, this was painted in. So this was painted in 1330s and um, so close to Renaissance uh, between medieval time and Renaissance and uh, <laughs> at that time you have to understand that uh, 50% of the population was under 15 and that most uh, of childhood, the way we saw childhood was a bit different. Um, we saw basically people under seven as young adult and people over seven as adult because they could start to do some labor. Um, so that's one fact that is quite interesting when we look at those paintings because the way that those babies are shown are not necessarily what we expect. Today we expect something uh, really cute, right? We expect something that looks young, that looks a bit clumsy sometimes. Uh, the big head is something that we have a lot of uh, feeling towards. We want to nurture that. Um, but in this painting we see that not, that's really not the case. Now, another thing interesting is that when we present babies in paintings, usually they're not just regular babies. They are uh, saints or they are Jesus. Uh, so that's really important as well because we talk about how do we want to represent uh, those uh, people. So this baby looks a bit weird, yes, because um, it, it looks almost like a tiny woman instead of a full-grown woman. Uh, and the way that she's kind of looking and gazing is kind of strange as well. Um, we know that this represents probably Mary around three or four years old because uh, after that, uh, Saint Anne actually uh, brought Mary to the temple. So after that, she would have been in the temple. So that gives us an indication of uh, how old uh, Mary could be in this uh, painting. Um, so, but you can still recognize some attributes uh, of Mary, but really important to know as well that Saint Anne, um, her attributes uh, were not really known uh, until the middle of the 14th century. So all the things that 
uh, really show her as Saint Anne uh, are not really visible in there. She doesn't have a lot of symbols, so it's a bit harder to recognize her except the halo that they have both around their head. I think it, it's, one, it's a good one to start with because it does really look like a tiny person. Okay, so for the second painting that I'm going to show you um, is this painting right here. And I have to say that I really like this one. I think the baby in it is just really special. So this baby in this painting uh, was made in 1425. Now what's a bit different about this painting is that we don't exactly know who is the artist. So that can change a lot um, the way that we can connect the baby and uh, connect with other paintings that were made by the same artist. So that's that we have less information about that. Um, one thing that I want to mention before talking about the baby in that one is that this is made on walnut. And what is really interesting about that is that when you paint on wood, the wood kind of change a shape and curve a bit. And we can actually see that uh, on, on in the painting that it's a bit curved and that's because it was painted on wood. Um, if we look at the baby now, uh, something really interesting is that the baby is blonde again. Uh, this is the Virgin and, and um, Jesus. So again, it's supposed to be Jesus and now we present him as a blonde baby, which is a bit strange, but we have to remember that in those years, blonde was, was seen as uh, a type of beauty. So if you're blonde, you, you are kind of the highest beauty. So that can explain why both of those characters are actually blonde. Um, if you look on the chest area of this baby, he looks almost like he has some abs. He's been working out a bit. Um, another interesting thing that I just realized, well not realized, but I searched for it, and is that in 1978 there was a Canadian stamp with this painting on it uh, in Canada. So if you had a chance, maybe you could have seen that on your envelope. Uh, so that's another thing that's quite interesting about this one. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is really kind of the fashion back then. Uh, so you can see that in this painting, Mary, but Jesus as well, have big foreheads, right? Um, but big foreheads was uh, basically a sign of beauty back then. So, and even we know that in medieval time, uh, women were actually plucking their hair uh, to uh, show a bigger forehead. So I'm not saying that's what happened necessarily in this painting, uh, but when we paint, that's something that we want to transpire. So the ideal of beauty, uh, which is the blonde hair, the, the big forehead. Um, so that's another thing that we can see in this painting. And that's uh, quite interesting as well. Okay, so for our third painting, uh, we are going to look at this beautiful big painting that is basically a sacred conversation. So sacred conversation is a theme uh, in painting that um, in, in the painting you have Mary, you have the Christ, and you have some saint, and they are in this informal uh, scene. So that's what we call a sacred uh, conversation, and that's one right here. Um, I, again, I love this painting because, again, the Christ in this painting is very, I feel like he's authoritarian a bit uh, in this painting, um, maybe because of his fingers trying to uh, bless everyone, but um, it, it's something that, that I found uh, of, of the feeling that you get when you look at this painting. Now, when we represent Jesus in a painting, there's a big question that transpire um, is, first of all, we want to represent Jesus in a way that he's um, strong, like I said before, and that he is the Christ. So he's not just a baby, he's the Christ. So we want to know that. Um, and second of all, we want to question a bit, what do we want to represent and how should we feel about painting or representing Jesus in a painting. So that's 
all the different ideas that the artists were thinking about when they were actually painting those uh, beautiful church uh, scene. Um, you have to remember at that time as well, painting is not uh, the easiest thing that you can do. You cannot go into a dollar store and buy some paint and some canvas and just paint for fun, right? It's expensive, you need to have a master usually, and you need to be uh, ordered uh, some paintings. Um, and uh, the people that have the money to order some painting at a time are the member of the clergy. So that's why you have a lot of religious paintings. So in this one, Jesus, um, as we can see there, is kind of in the middle of the painting, and he's standing basically on Mary's uh, knee, which is another thing that's kind of uh, funny. I don't know necessarily how old is the child supposed to be, uh, but obviously we can we could say that it's a 30 year old child, uh, which doesn't really make sense uh, in the story. Um, Yes, so, and if you look though, there is a start of knowing that babies have certain features, like necessarily bigger uh, cheeks. So you can see that the cheeks, the cheekbones are really kind of a, a bit bigger than, than what we expect on a tiny man. Um, so that's an interesting fact about uh, this painting. Um, other thing that we can actually see is that usually the Christ is, first of all, naked, uh, and not always, but in many paintings he, he is naked. In this one, it seems to be a bit more like uh, an older version uh, of the Christ, um, and he's fully dressed. So that's another question that I have about this painting and about the purpose of the, his clothes um, on this one. So this piece would have been made uh, to be in a chapel, so in a church, and uh, to be seen as from below. So you would be sitting in front of it. So the perspective that you have of it when you just walk by it uh, is different than the actual experience you would have uh, in the church. Um, you can see as well that on the saints, the many saints and the Pope at the end that you see, you can actually read the name, uh, their name that is written on the halo that they have. Um, another thing is that you can recognize some of the saint by the symbol that they have on them. For example, the star on Mary's shoulder is a clear example of a symbol uh, that is there to help people understand who exactly she is. Now we are off to one of my all-time favorite paintings. Um, and this painting, I like to show it uh, in front of groups uh, because, and as the first painting, because I think it represents a lot of things that are kind of weird sometimes in awkward in paintings. Uh, there's a lot of those elements in this painting, and we can mention the giraffe, we can mention the iceberg, we can mention uh, the proportions, uh, but we're gonna stay with the baby and look at the baby mostly. Um, this was made by Piero di Cosimo, and Pierre Cosimo uh, is said to be more like a recluse, uh, was not a big fan of a big social uh, event, and was, it says that he was not even a big fan of church bells and all that. So we could see that this baby that we're going to talk about now is not supposed to be baby Jesus. So that's a bit different than the other paintings that we saw so far. Um, so. If we look at this baby, and it's quite interesting because when I present this baby, uh, my main punchline is this baby is maybe not the prettiest baby, maybe more on the ugly side, um, but it's actually funny because it kind of is a bit more a baby representation than what we, what we have seen so far. Uh, so you can see that his limbs, his arms, for example, are a bit chubby, uh, his head is a bit big, uh, his feet it, it kind of look disproportionate. So we kind of feel like we need to take care of this poor little baby. So that's something that obviously when we don't talk about Jesus is something that is kind of allowed, I guess. Um, but it's important to note as well that this artist, like I said, 
is not necessarily the artists that follow all the convention of the time. So that might be uh, why we have this uh, baby looking like that. Um, this was painted in 1490. Uh, and at this time, you know, in, in history, um, medieval time and Renaissance, it's not, we can't have just one date and everything have happened like that. It's, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it depends on which uh, country and in which province and it kind of, uh, kind of happened uh, little by little. Um, so that's a good example of kind of the Renaissance coming uh, and leaving slowly medieval uh, subject and time. So we are doing something a bit more uh, naturalistic um, in a way that we are trying to represent, um, like the way that we represent the trees as well is kind of a bit different. Um, and this is uh, Vulcan in Aeolus. So it talks about this Vulcan here and Aeolus, so basically gods. So again, we are in another, we are not in the Christian uh, religion, we are more in the kind of uh, mythology uh, story in this painting. The final thing I want to say about this painting is that, I don't know if you remember the painting we saw previously, but they were a bit more flat. In this painting, we see this kind of perspective. We kind of see the three dimension, and we can see that, for example, those people in the back are really smaller compared to the people in the front. Uh, we have this kind of iceberg over there, the blue color that we will see later on as something to show perspective, like blue mountain. There will always be a blue mountain in the landscape, and it's a trend, and I like to say it's like a, a, a Justin Bieber trend, it, it's gonna pass. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so uh, that's something that we can really see in this painting that, that marked the, the changes as well between the Renaissance and medieval time. So for this painting, we jump a bit in the time. So this is 1515, um, and, and it's quite interesting, this painting, because it's another painting of the Virgin and the Child. Um, but the artist decided not to put that many clues on who is who. Well, I mean, we know who's the virgin and who's the child, but I mean, if we don't necessarily read the title, we could be mistaken. So the only thing that we have is basically the halo that we have there. And so not like a, we saw some good halos that were really, really bright in the other paintings. This is not the same thing. And we can see a little one on the other one, uh, on Mary's face. And we saw we have the book that could be maybe a Bible, uh, but even the clothes, and the blue is there, but this kind of purple, pink is not the, the red that we are used to. Um, one thing that is interesting when we research these paintings, what I'd like to do is to look at other paintings that those artists made in the same time and uh, what is funny is that sometimes you will have the same faces that comes back. So for this painting, for example, uh, the artist used uh, his wife as a model. So Mary is actually a model of his wife and he used his wife in other paintings as well. Um, and for the baby, uh, it's actually another live model of a child that uh, we don't really know the, uh, the identity. So the child himself still have those blonde hair, which is again a symbol of beauty. Uh, so we can see that in there. And you can see the child, this face is coming back often in a lot of paintings by this artist. So if you look and you research it, you will see this face again and again. But the other thing that you will see is different faces and different babies that are actually a bit more realistic or a bit more how can I say that? Maybe prettier than this one in other paintings. So when we look at this painting, the body is another thing that is quite interesting. So the way the body is disposed is really in tune with what was going on in those years and the, basically the sculptural idea of uh, manners. Um, and that's something that we can really see in this painting. And finally, as the last painting that we are going to see today is this hidden gem 
uh, it's actually in the side gallery, so not a lot of people necessarily stumble upon it. Um, and it's a painting that I like to show every time I get a chance to people because I think there's a lot to learn about this painting, but it, it, it's another painting that's kind of fun as well to, to talk about. Um, so it's another conversation piece. Uh, remember I told you about the sacred conversation with the painting we saw before? This is another one of these paintings and this was made in 1525 so it's the most recent painting that I've been talking about uh, today. So, and we can see that. So, um, again, I just want to point out before we start into the baby, the Blue Mountain, right? Because we did talk about the Blue Mountain uh, in Piero di Cosimo with the perspective. So that's another thing that is coming with Renaissance. Um, so this painting, now what is interesting is that I always make a little joke saying that we know who's the father because they have the same forehead. Um, but remember again that in those times a bigger forehead was not only a symbol of beauty but as intelligence as well so that's something that's really important um so baby jesus on that one even if he has a big head a big forehead his face is really small he's still kind of a baby right we don't see him necessarily as a tiny man he is a chubby baby at one point as well we can actually see in his leg and his arm, uh, doesn't have that much abs uh, compared to other babies that we saw. So it's a bit more in tune with babies uh, in this uh, painting. What's fun about Katana, uh, uh, this artist, uh, is that if you, again, if you look for other paintings by him, his baby Jesus always looked like that. Uh, well, always. Maybe not always, but there's at least four other paintings with the same face and the same uh, characteristic about the head. So that's, that's another thing that's funny. Now we can't really be inside the head of an artist, so it's always hard to know for sure what they meant um, when they painted it. But what we know is that with what we experience in other paintings so far is that there's some societal uh, concept that we're still talk about and still use in paintings. Uh, so again, the, as I said, the forehead, the plucking of the hair, we will see sometimes Jesus uh, as being bald. We don't see that in there. What is again interesting in this painting is that it's actually one of the best depiction of a baby. Uh, if we forget, uh, if we tend to, to forget the, the fact that the baby had and to be honest, I think you can't really get tired of this painting. So if you come to the National Gallery, please come by and just see it in real, because it's a real uh, pleasure to actually experience this painting uh, in reality. I used to say to my friends that I brought here that if one day I have a baby, I want my baby to look like this. Um, so this what the, the basically ends our visit today together. Uh, I showed you a couple of my, a few of my favorite babies. There is much more uh, that you can come on site and see. We are now open, so it, it's going to be uh, a pleasure to see you inside the gallery as well. And don't hesitate to uh, comment uh, at the bottom of the video to tell us which baby you really appreciated. Uh, I'm going to read that with uh, immense joy for sure. Thank you.